For the 1976 remake of King Kong, producer Dino De Laurentiis had special effects technician Carlo Rimbaldi build a 40-foot replica of the creature, requiring 3,100 feet of hydraulic hose and 4,500 feet of electrical wiring. For close-ups of Kong, makeup artist Rick Baker designed and wore a gorilla suit. Here's Rick Baker to tell us about it. Back in 1974, I guess, that this guy named Dino De Laurentiis was going to do a remake of King Kong. And I said, oh, it's going to be a joke. They're going to use some jerk in a gorilla suit, and they're not going to do it right. You know? And I was really disappointed to hear that, because I love King Kong. It's a great film. And uh, then I got a call from someone that said, hey, you know, Dino De Laurentiis wants to talk to you about working on King Kong. And I, at first, I kind of thought, no, I'm not going to work on this. It's going to be a piece of garbage. And then I thought, well, maybe I can really bring something to it, the fact that I've so into gorillas, you know, maybe I can, I, I can add something, make it a little more real, and, and talk into doing it right. I went and met with him, and I brought gorilla heads that I'd made, and little sculptures of gorillas, and all kinds of gorilla stuff, and, and talked to him, and eventually ended up getting the job to work on the film. And they were looking for somebody stupid enough to, to put the suit on, and, and I said, I'm stupid enough. <laughs> yeah. so. They, uh, after they tried several other actors and, and, and things, I, in the meantime, was building a test costume to do some film tests with that I built to fit myself. And the director just liked what I was doing better, and, uh, and I ended up getting the job. I think anybody who's worn a gorilla costume since the time that I did King Kong has benefited from the fact, so, uh, one that I've made, has benefited from the fact that I've been inside one of those. I was inside that costume for nine months, I believe, and I know what it's like to be in that. I try to make my costumes so they're comfortable and you can get in and out of them. And, and if you have to go to the bathroom, you, you can. You don't have to hold it all day. You know? and, and, I, I've learned from that experience. And learn he did. Now considered one of the masters in creature design, Rick Baker won his second Academy Award in 1987 for creating this lovable Bigfoot from the movie Harry and the Hendersons. I do normal type makeup work where I glue stuff on a person's face and, and, and that had its limitations, so it evolved into things like Harry here, which is a, a radio-controlled mask, which is designed to actually fit the actor's eyes going there, uh, and it blends onto his face. In the top of Harry's head here, in between the space where the actor's head ends and, the, and Harry's head ends are radio-controlled servo motors, which activate the face, and this is what controls it here, this, these joysticks that are in here. And I'll turn this on, and I'll turn the battery on on Harry there. And he jumps into a, an expression here. So with these things, I can move the lips and get all kinds of expressions. And there's different keypads that I get to get the brows to move. This is where he's real sad. He's very sad a lot. He can be kind of mean, kind of growl from side to side here like this. These joysticks here are, these four joysticks operate the lips, this being the upper lip, these two being the upper lip. And this being a lower lip here. These little brass pads here change the brow expression, which is something that enabled us to have one operator control an entire face, where in the film it was three puppeteers. And we can make a sad face with that. And you can get meaner this way. It's fun because it, as you can see, his head's pretty big. It's about as big as my torso, you know. And as a as a rubber appliance. You, you just could not move it and, and, and get the expressions that we can get with a articulated mask like this.